Hello and welcome to Advanced Thinking in Homeland Security. This is the first of many series uh, where we investigate the issues as they evolve through the Advanced Thinking Homeless Security course here at CHDS. I'm Andre Billadieu. I happen to have just finished the HSX course. And with me today, we have guests, Dr. Michael Laranyaga and Dr. John Kaminsky, both HSX graduates. And they'll be looking into the effects and impact of climate change as it, as it impacts the role and mission of Homeland Security. John, Mike, uh, welcome to the uh, program here. We want to talk about climate change. John, if you'd lead us and kick us off into uh, why did you pick climate change as your primary mission at HSX? So, Andre, uh, thank you. Uh, so, um, I was offered an opportunity to come back to CHDS for the HSX program where uh, we explore and examine future threats in the homeland security phase, uh, space and we apply uh, systems thinking and uh, advanced thinking and homeland security to, to uh, identify and help resolve uh, those, uh, those, some of those challenges. And Mike and I came across uh, what we believe, uh, or the, actually the group came across a number of threats, one of which was climate change. We looked at climate change as something uh, that wasn't necessarily in our space as a New York City police lieutenant mm -hmm. and as in the Coast Guard. Not necessarily my wheelhouse issues, an issue that I was uh, that I was aware of, as was Mike. And what we did was we examined the, the, the threats or, or what was happening in climate change, and we wanted to see how that would impact the homeland security space. Uh, certainly, uh, a long, uh, thorough examination of the science, uh, very complex, uh, rife with uncertainties. But we did come to the conclusion that. The climate change uh, science from the UN, from the uh, US National Climate Assessment, very very accurate, uh, very threatening, um, certainly going to impact the current five homeland security missions, whether they be terrorism, border security, immigration, cybersecurity, and resilience. So uh, what we did was we examined the science, we examined the homeland security space, we looked at what might happen. So. At the start of the program, you came here as a prior New York City policeman, as a Coast Guard reservist, and as a professor. Mike, you came here from Texas, one time Oklahoma University professor, and an industrial hygienist. Very diverse backgrounds, different parts of the country. I think you both each had different ideas coming into the program. John mentioned some ideas, some lenses from which the team of you two looked through to develop uh, kind of your own mission statement to bring. Um, climate change into the homeless security realm. Can you expand, Mike, on, on those lenses and how you use that as a tool to develop a hypothesis and, and, and something to move forward from that hadn't been done before in homeless security? So I'm an engineer and scientist. I'm a former professor in the department at Oklahoma State University in the College of Engineering. I now help uh, organizations understand and mitigate risk. And one of the things that We've heard in the news, and there's a lot of had been a lot of debate, is whether climate change exists. And to be honest, I didn't know. And we decided, uh, as a group, the HSA group, as one of the twelve grand challenges that the nation is going to face in the future. And so that that's what we became interested in, and thought to ourselves that we really need to know how climate change is affecting homeland security, and then what we can do if it is or is not. Uh, we did come to the conclusion conclusion that climate change is. Uh, an existential threat to the homeland security of the United States and, and we move forward with the premise that the United States should securitize or place at the top of the policy, ag policy agenda uh, for the federal government uh, climate change. So part of the mission here at HSX is to explore, both identify and explore the perhaps the unknown unknowns from before uh, as they become known and to get ahead of it. Is that a fair statement? That would be. Okay. So in doing so, would you say that there might have been silos of uh, homeland security efforts or thought regarding climate change that you got to dig into and ultimately are you taking some of those silos and putting them together or are you kind of reinventing an approach? So we did, uh, we looked at the um, homeland security space and we looked at uh, the national security space where they actually had done a considerable amount of work in uh, climate change. The Department of Defense certainly at the right. forefront of that as was the National Intelligence Council 
and examined uh, the climate change uh, threat, the climate change and the threats to national security. So there was a lot of literature there, and there was also literature actually within DHS uh, from, by uh, White House direction. We had a climate adaptation plan, a climate uh, strategy plan, and we have, and specifically an Arctic security strategy, uh, strategy from the Coast Guard that uh, certainly said, hey. The Department of Homeland Security and the Homeland Security Enterprise, and it's important important to understand that when we we're not talking about DHS specific, uh, notwithstanding that much of the guidance does come from DHS itself, but uh, DHS uh, uh, and the Homeland Security community speaks about the Homeland Security Enterprise, all levels of government, federal, state, local, tribal, territorial, the private citizen, right, right. and the American the uh, American citizen he him or herself, and that's that's at the core. Uh, the core of the Center for Homeland Defense and Security. What we also found that one of the one of the primary premises of homeland security is preparedness. Also in that literature was this concept that the home, homeland security and the national security world had a duty to prepare for climate change. So that was one of our our premises of uh, taking that as a, as a presumption. How should that enterprise prepare for climate change? And you felt uh, strong enough, of course, that there was a gap amongst and between the agencies, but that at the strategic level, at the higher level, maybe there wasn't that amalgamation. Uh, with that in mind, uh, maybe you can, Mike, you can project out, if you had your way, if it was up to you two to project out one year, five year, 10 year, 20 years out in the Homeland Security Enterprise, what might you hope to see? What, what's your next step in this evolution from HSX? So what we would hope to happen is, is, to, is that the DHS adds climate change, preparing for and mitigating the risk associated with climate change as a sixth mission space. And our hope is that uh, that would lead to um, cohesive mitigation efforts within DHS and then throughout the federal government. Climate change is, uh, there's a lot of collaboration going on in government with climate change, but it's not permeated through all, all departments. And it hasn't permeated down to the individual citizen. So our hope is that we can get to where every individual in the United States takes responsibility for uh, both preparing for and mitigating the risks associated with climate change. Kind of like what FEMA is attempting to do, certainly with disaster preparedness, that it's up to the individual to pay attention. Exactly. As far as deliverables uh, post HSX, can you, can you kind of walk us through what you hope to accomplish in the forthcoming months or years? to make this happen? Okay, on a number of levels, we've just finished and we'll be submitting a journal article to the Homeland Security Affairs uh, Journal. And in that article, what we have said, we've done is uh, we've used a pre-mortem scenario planning where we uh, forecasted what might happen 2030 to 2040 based on the literature. And what we found, uh, as, as other studies have found, is that the Homeland Security Enterprise is woefully unprepared for climate change. Should the impacts of climate change, as predicted by the UN and the National Climate Assessment, happened, uh, we would have a, a multiple, multiple catastrophes, ranging from wildfires, more wildfires, as we're seeing already uh, in, the, in California, and more flooding and inundation on the East Coast, and certainly some uh, tremendous uh, precipitous melting of snow in the Arctic, creating a whole new uh, domain there. So, Writ large, the Homeland Security Enterprise, uh, should these estimates come true, is woefully unprepared. So our, our aim, our target, is for the Homeland Security Enterprise to reach that, reach that place. Uh, we have partnered with the University Agency Partnership Initiative of the Center for Homeland Defense and Security, as well as INSPIR, the International, uh, the International Society for Security, Preparedness, Resilience, uh, to uh, create a, um, a conference with uh, partnering with the University of Alaska for June of 2020. Uh, prior to that, we hope to have a multidisciplinary textbook as, a, as a, a main subject matter of that conference, as well as uh, publishing uh, the proceedings of that. So the idea is we want to get all members of the enterprise uh, up to speed, understand the multidisciplinary aspects of that, and certainly get, and, and trying to energize the enterprise, as well as Mike, and Mike uh, certainly focuses on this, the, the American citizen, each and every American citizen, as we have said previously, see something, say something, get involved uh, in the, the fight on terrorism. We are trying to uh, enlist every American citizen on the fight against climate change. Well, that's a kind of a refreshing ground up perspective that uh, we can certainly always do better at it within the department. 
Um, I'm curious if you're uh, coming to CHDS as a master's student or, or an ALP member, and, and this, this topic is of interest, uh, how might they either partake? Is it open source? Is there a way to get involved to add uh, input or insights into your project? Is there any way to get that done? Well, certainly through the outreach through the University Agency Partnership Initiative, uh, which we'll, um, we'll be convening back here in Monterey in October. Uh, but one of the initiatives at UAPI uh, is to certainly re-engage or to engage the, uh, the Alumni Association and current students. So uh, that this is certainly an open invitation to all CHDS master's students okay. to, um, to uh, use, use our source material. Part of our goal is to really to continue, uh, continue that climate security uh, conversation in our homeland security space. Well, you would hope so on such an important topic. Let me ask you a couple questions about what keeps you up at night, if you can give me one good answer for climate change, and where do you see the United States or DHS or other agencies taking vital initial steps that you find very positive? So again, what keeps you up at night, and what are some positive aspects of what you've seen in your research, the good things that are happening? Climate change is the ultimate tragedy of the commons, where a shared resource a limited resource uh, may be used by others uh, or depleted by others uh, at the peril of the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned that not only is it a national problem, but it's a global problem that we're going to need to partner with uh, other countries to solve. Uh, we need uh, aggressive mitigation efforts uh, to reduce the level of, levels of carbon emissions uh, globally, and um, I think that's a great challenge for the future. Some of the positive things is that we're going to open up the Arctic. We're going to, we may make new discoveries and archaeological findings uh, that lead to um, more knowledge about the world or uh, you know, more, uh, provide more energy resources to us. So there, while there are quite a few negatives with climate change, there are some positives also. Very good. And, and to you, John, same question. So uh, I'm, I just love the beach, and uh, I am concerned that my grandchildren aren't going to enjoy uh, the, the beaches uh, and the coastal resorts that, I, that I, I got to see. My hope is that we don't have to get to that doomsday scenario for something to happen. We have in Homeland Security so many uh, post-mortems, after-action reports from 9-11, Hurricane Katrina, our most recent uh, 2017 um, hurricane seasons, where it has to get so bad for government, for the private sector, and for citizens to, to uh, realize the, the risks inherent and to address those risks. So part of our research, and certainly our scenario planning article, is to scare the American people a little bit, just a, enough for them to realize, the American citizen, for our governors, our mayors, the White House, uh, the, the global community to understand the threats that inherent to climate change and how we can do a great deal in mitigation, in energy conservation, to uh, not have to have that doomsday scenario. Part of your HSX experience was being able to collect your ideas and share them with professionals in, in other agencies or other exp experts in their field. Um, do you have any examples of kind of what we would call a cross-pollinization that happened at HSX and how that might have uh, turned your research in a different direction, something you might not have thought about before? Well, there was a good deal, deal of collaboration here at the Naval Postgraduate School. We had uh, three professors that uh, we did some certain considerable outreach for. They may be uh, writing some of the chapters in our textbooks as well as Monmouth University's uh, Coastal Resilience Institute and the University of Alaska, as well as, again, going back to that University Agency Partnership Initiative. So what, what people uh, are seeing in this is um, multidisciplinary. And also a great amount of um, outreach to the public health sector. Certainly they get it. Public health sector absolutely gets this. Uh, and them, them in the emergency management community, probably uh, what I see in the immediacy two of our uh, two fields of our strongest allies. We're enlisting everyone, but they, they, they get it already. Very good, very good. And uh, through the HSX networks, you're able to patch together uh, a working group uh, probably not seen before here at CHDS. And, and one more question for you, Mike. 
as an average citizen, maybe you, maybe you get to see this video or somebody talks about it. What can an average citizen do today to help mitigate climate change for tomorrow? Uh, one of the main things is use less energy so you produce less carbon. And that includes uh, uh, you know, in your household, you can conserve energy or in your automobile, use a, a, you know, purchase automobiles that, that uh, have lower carbon emissions as well as, you know, take a walk sometimes instead of taking the car, like take the stairs instead of taking the elevator and, um, you know, take your bags to the grocery store, you know, don't use plastic straws. You know, there's a lot of things that we can do at the individual level uh, that can help in this endeavor. And to, to solve this, we're, each individual is going to have to help. Along those lines, John, do you have any examples of state initiatives that you, you find useful or innovative enough to, to bring to, to the fore in your work, in your forthcoming work? California, we're here now. Uh, we, we believe California uh, is an exemplar uh, that can serve as a, a positive role model for every state in this country. Do you have any closing uh, remarks or ideas uh, for the audience, Michael, John, before we finish up? Personally, you know, I've always thought about um, Part of the mission here at HSX is to think beyond the immediate. Um, Thad Allen, he was an admiral for the Coast Guard, used to say, uh, we need to get away from the tyranny of the present, the next fire, the next earthquake, the next oil spill. We need to get beyond the tyranny of the present. And I think that's one thing that HSX does well, is it forces you to think three, four, five steps down the road and, and think of issues and then work backwards. I, I, I like to ex, uh, describe HSX as kind of that model. Um, that said, is there anything you'd like to leave the audience with, uh, final thoughts on HSX or uh, your, your research? I think that as a society, we have a great opportunity to intervene before disaster happens. And I, I'd hope that each of us, each, each citizen of the United States and perhaps the world, uh, would work together to uh, mitigate this incident before it happens. I think that it's an existential threat to humanity and, and we need to act. Are you familiar with the global warming models from 2096? And uh, can you describe a little bit about that model? I, I think I saw something on that in the notes. There are essentially models that show, even as, as a best case, we're gonna experience global warming uh, that we could mitigate uh, if we start now. The worst case is that it, we could have uh, essentially severe uh, effects from climate change if we continue as, as a business as usual type um, carbon emissions like we're doing now. So if we don't start uh, conserving now, uh, it'll hurt us later. Very good. Same question, John. How would you close out your experience at HSX? So just this morning, uh, I was reflecting on where I was uh, a long time ago as a, a lieutenant in New York City Police Department and how we had a certain law enforcement mission space. And that changed so much after 9-11 where local police assumed this counterterrorism role uh, having retired from the, the NYPD, New York, City, New York City Police Department, being here, being exposed to the Center for Homeland Defense and Security, I, prior to that, I never would have saw myself as, as, a, as a cop on the beat uh, talking about climate change, right. talk, sitting here talking to you, uh, being able to uh, partner up with an industrial hygienist and look at and examine the issues inherent to climate change. What, what I have learned, it, it is everybody's mission. It's the mission of the New York City Police Department. It's the mission of the Coast Guard. It's the, it's the mission of every member of the Homeland Security Enterprise, as well as the American citizens, to deal with it, this uh, problem, the risks and, and hazards inherent to climate change. So it is, uh, you know, we, we sometimes throw these terms around. It's a community effort. It's a whole of community, the Homeland right. Security Enterprise. I, I, I know in my heart that it is, it is an enterprise approach. And it is about local police, the fire, EMS, public health, the National Guard, the Coast Guard, the military, uh, levels of government, the, the municipalities. It's, it's all of us. And as Mike has mentioned, and, and we didn't initially, this wasn't initially our aim. It's, a, it's an international, it's a global effort. This is our time. It's our threat, our risk, and, and it's there for us. Uh, that's a great summary. Uh, with that, thank you for appearing on the very first advanced thinking in homeland security video and uh nice summary this is this is where hsx where great things happen unlikely people fall into leadership roles on a, on a national international level like yourselves so thanks for coming today thank you thank you andre